So the second theme of the Song of Songs that you see out through this series of poems between this man and woman is the celebration of attraction. They love one another, and they're particularly taken with each other's physical characteristics. Now, when we say that they're taken with each other's physical characteristics, they kind of extol the virtues of how they look physically, but also some of the virtues that come along with their character. And to tell you the truth, this is one of the areas where the poetry of the Hebrews was a little bit different from the poetry that we have. Uh, for instance, we usually think of poetry as rhyming in terms of words or metaphor, or sometimes we have it in terms of a visualization. Those are the kinds of terms that we're familiar with in terms of poetry. For the Hebrew, their poetry r rhymes in a different way. It rhymes in terms of thought or unifying emotion. If we tried to read Song of Songs like the poetry that we read, some of these things wouldn't make sense at all. For instance, when the man is talking about the woman, he says, your hair is like a flock of goats moving down the slopes of Gilead. Well, you know, that's a little bit hard to relate to, to think somebody's hair is like a bunch of goats. Uh, here's another one. Your teeth are like shorn ewes fresh from washing, bearing twins with no deaths. You know, uh, so he's comparing her teeth to a bunch of sheep that are bearing lambs. Uh, probably not exactly what we normally think of in terms of uh, how that's really, really special about one another. Or this one, uh, the idea that your neck is like the Tower of David built with turrets that contain a thousand shields. Well, that doesn't sound exactly physically attractive. But if you think about these separately, you'll see how they all work together in terms of a unifying thought. So for instance, a flock of goats moving down the slopes of Gilead. Imagine if you were a shepherd and you were on the other side of a hill of a crevasse and a hill on the other side, and your goats are coming down that hill, and it looks like one mass of flowing animals moving their way down. Their color totally encompasses the hill. And I was the one that raised those goats and looked out after them. I would think, man, that's a beautiful sight. Isn't that cool to take a look at them? You know, the idea that your teeth are like hues that bear two lambs apiece and none of them die. Well, imagine if you were a shepherd and you actually had that, where you sh that your freshly shorn sheep were there totally washed. They came into their bearing season and they both delivered a twofer and none died, which is highly, highly unusual. Even at this day and time, you would think, man, was I lucky. That was perfect. Or if you were thinking about living in a hovel in the ancient world and you came up against this imposing structure of the Tower of David that was so big and so perfectly put together and made of stone that could house a thousand soldiers in their equipment, you would think, wow, that's perfect. Well, you see, I put those ideas together and you can see that even though they may not rhyme in terms of metaphor, they rhyme in terms of thought. They're communicating the message of the writer, I am so lucky. Wow, you are perfect. That's what Hebrew poetry can do when you learn how to read it properly. Mm -hmm.